Hello folks, welcome to another episode of Oh Danny Boy. I'm Danny and uh, today we're coming to you from the St. Louis Science Center. Uh, we just decided to come over here to Forest Park and see what we could do. The zoo was too packed so we come over here to the Science Center. Uh, this building behind me though is called the Planetarium. One of the tips I like to give people is that if you come to the St. Louis Science Center there is parking that you can pay for at the front entrance. But if you come over here into Forest Park and go to the planetarium, a lot of times you can find free parking over here. Yeah, today we're just going to be showing you all the free things you can do at the Science Center. Over here in the planetarium, you've got all kinds of space stuff going on. It's mostly going to show you about space, and you can even go up into the planetarium. That does cost, though. a little exhibit just showing what the planetarium is like. And of course they have little shops that you can go into and buy things. They have a little area over here that's actually supposed to be like if you're on a base in Mars. You can look out the window of your ship here and see what the red plane it looks like. They even have little games you can play. Gravity testing stations. The Earth Mars comparison. They even have little rovers that are going to be just like the ones that are on Mars. Right now, somebody is controlling this one here. I don't know who it is that's controlling it, but it's pretty cool to watch. And this is a little area here that kind of looks like Mars. Here is a little model of the planet Mars. And here's another rover. This one here is not awake quite yet. says that we can actually go over to the Mission Mars control panel to program the rover. And then we go down this little corridor here and along the walls they actually have things here about the dawn of the space age, that's when it began. And then you go down and it's all the different years as space travel became a reality all the different projects that went along with it. So we finally landed on the moon. And as you get to the end of the hallway here, you do have a little flight simulator you can go into. 
that does cost. And here are the prices for each. This is cool. And then as you get over to the other side here, you have the art of science. And they're gonna show you things like microscopes. And the things you see inside of microscopes. Or maybe not, that doesn't, <laughs> that's just artwork that kind of looks like the things you see in microscopes. Over here we got some beakers and test tubes. These things here were actually created by microscopes. This one here was made by a Cypher ES Atomic Force Microscope. The EOS 5D Mark II Microscope. All kinds of strange looking things that you wouldn't imagine are even on this planet, but they are. They're actually just so small you can't see them. Without the help of a microscope. And what in the world is that? That is a transmission electron microscope. That thing is big. Wow. And over here, we're looking at the wonderful world of coral. We're still in that long hallway that connects the science center and the planetarium. And these are some very early telescopes, and micro, or microscopes, I mean. They got a little game that you can play that you got to land a lunar module. Daniel here, he's actually trying to land this one here. Let's see how he does. And he did it! Yay! Come on, Daniel, crash it! Crash it! Crash it! Got 16 seconds left, but otherwise it's gonna. Eight, seven, six, five. Okay, and as you come out of there, you actually have a little bridge you can go across. The bridge looks down on the highway. This is Highway 64 right here. And you even have little radar detectors. Let's see who's all speeding. Got some folks speeding, it looks like. Yep. Nate, stop. As far as Even have little things you can look over. These actually look down on the road. You can stand on it even. I'm a pretty big guy and I'm standing on it, so it's not gonna break if you do. Jump. Yeah. Come on, jump. And as you get into the science center, you start in to get things that are structures, things that are man-made and built. Now, number 
We're gonna play with the cars. From little bridges here. Things here where you can build bridges, and over here you can actually look at a bridge that, in a little bit of an earthquake, things go nuts. Uh, they said this is actually winds. The Tacoma Narrows Bridge is located near the city of Tacoma in the state of Washington. It crosses over Puget Sound, which condenses to a mile wide. How would you like Tacoma to be on a bridge that moved like that? In an area called the Narrows. I don't this think is how so. The bridge got its name. And here they can build a little arch. See if they can do it. Step back and take a bow. You guys come over here and take a bow. For your audience. Okay. Now destroy it. <laughs> they do have a big Omnimax theater here. It has some great movies that you can go see there on a gigantic screen. Uh, makes you feel like you're right there in there with it. Right now they got volcanoes, the fires of creation going on. And we're just going to look to see what the prices are here. So for the Omnimax rooms, right now they have superpower dogs. So there's three of us today. So for three of us, they would be $30. So that's $10 a piece. So we're not actually going to buy that, but just wanted to look and see what it would cost. And over here, they got a little little deli here. Uh, <laughs> she's getting out of the way. I just want to show the pricing here. 
you can actually get assorted candy, some popcorn, some nachos, hot dogs, chips. You got beverages, so you can get sodas, frozen beverages, bottled beverages, bottled water, some dipping dots. A lot of things here. You can get some candy over here. They even have some neat stuff here with little balls going up the thing and they go around here and down and over and back and forth and oh there goes a the ball. Let's follow it on its journey. So much fun. Here's another one here, the ball going into it. See what they do. Okay, and then once you get over into the actual science center portion, they have another area. It's called Mission to Mars or Mission Mars. This is a full size rover. Little mini rover down there. See the solar panels on its back. Over here, you got all kinds of things going on. Mission Control Center. You got some building stuff going on here. Lots of fun things to do here at the Science Center. And this here is the area where you actually come to to program those rovers we saw earlier. You program them here and you can see them up there on the screen. Or you can go over to the planetarium and you can actually watch them move. It'd probably be better if you had somebody over there watching it move and you were here doing your thing, making it actually move. In this little room here, we got what looks like to be some building areas here. Now this here does have a fee and I will try to find out for you what that fee is. Over here we have the Maker Garage. Has some different things back here that they make. Some neat things, look like they might be using a uh, 3D printer of some sort to do this. They've even built a Star Wars mask of some sort. And if that's not Star Wars, please let me know uh, what that is in the comments below. And I was just told that this is actually Star-Lord's mask from Guardians of the Galaxy. You guys probably knew that already though. I should have. And here they have a sail race going on. They give you all the stuff here that you can build a little boat and put a sail on it. And then you bring it over here and they have wind that pokes me and Daniel here. We're going to race. And I floored him. <laughs> I beat him badly. Huh. Yeah, I, <laughs> I beat him very badly. But I beat him the first time. He no, he him. didn't. He tied me the first time. He wants to do it again, so let's do it again. Was your start out ahead? Huh? Your out ahead. Not very much. We're gonna try again. Switch sides. See who beat. See who wins this time. And oh 
Well, mine started out good. Daniel won that time though, but I won the last time. We, it's conclusive that boat over there is slower. And this is the pricing on just about everything here in the, at the time. We have the Omnimax, the Planetarium, and the Discovery Room. Those are the things here that do have pricings to them. Now we're heading into an area called Grow. This is all about plants and the things we grow here on this earth. And these are little seedlings here growing. And Grow is a permanent attraction here at the St. Louis Science Center. We're going to go check it out, see if we can get into it. It's all about the things we grow in this world and how your food gets to your table. So here's a map of the grow area. A little thing telling you how to navigate the area. Got some farm equipment. The farm equipment was actually donated to the Science Center by some friends of ours. Daniel, what's the name of their company? We'll promote it here. Case. Uh, it's, it's, a, not, it's national. They just own it. Uh, they just own a franchise. Okay, and what's the name of the franchise? Case IH. Case IH, okay. So that's where all the tractors that we're going to see come from. Got some little things here talking about Illinois here and Missouri over here. Talking about what the soil looks like and what type of soils in different areas. This here they have different states, what the soil looks like underneath the ground. Yeah, and the majority of it actually comes right out of Collinsville, Illinois. And we also produce more pumpkins than any other state. State snack food, evidently, is popcorn, which we eat a lot of at our house. They're trying to get to be a national That would be amazing. And uh, over 10,000 acres in Illinois are planted with green peas. Hmm. Something I didn't know. Learning a lot on this trip today. This over here is all about bumblebees. And I do know that we're having issues here in the United States with bees not being around. They're very important to our ecosystem. We need bees. And that's my public service announcement for today. And you see the harvester there is funded by Case IH, which is what Daniel said the name of his buddy's uh, dad's businesses. Over here, we got some little growing stations going on. It's kind of like a little area here where maybe kids would do a full farm. Or... And of course, they got their outdoor eatery over here. If you come here in the summertime, this will be open. Yeah, right now, it's spring. It's not quite time for these things to be open, but let's go over here and see what kind of food they have and what the prices are. So here we go. We have a burger for $8.95. That comes with slaw or chips. A brat with slaw or chips for $5.95. Hot dog with slaw or chips $4.95. Then they have some adult beverages it looks like here. Uh, some draft beer, Montel wine, bottled beer, domestic beers, and of course your soda and your water. Okay, and it looks like they're only open Friday through Sunday from 11.30 to 2.30, so it's not a long time. Okay, and this here is an aquaponics greenhouse. 
down in that lower part there, they said that they have fish that live down in there. And the water from the fish tank is actually brought up into the plants. Byproduct of the fish there, that it helps the plants to grow better. Kind of neat how it all works together. Okay. And folks, just another little announcement here. Don't throw your gum on the ground uh, anywhere you go. Put it in a trash can, please. Just stepped in some and had to scrape it off. Okay, and we are going to go down here next. Go see Tyrannosaurus Rex. He's a big boy. Okay, now we are downstairs. And as you see, T Rex took out a Triceratops. And he's up here just boasting about it and roaring and letting us know what he thinks about us. They are big animals. We even have a pterodactyl up there. Oh, now this here is a little tornado. Here in the St. Louis area where we live at, tornadoes are a little more frequent than we'd like them to be. But this exhibit here just kind of shows you though how they're built and how the wind twisting can build them up. Really kind of neat to see it. Now this little section over here, this is all about earthquakes. They actually have a little earthquake simulator going on here. They're telling you about the tectonic plates that are here in the St. Louis area. It's actually just south of here. They call it the New Madrid uh, area. It's uh, earthquake zones. As you can see right here in this area here. That's where some extremely violent earthquakes have happened in the past. You can feel them all the way up to St. Louis, even all the way up here in uh, Wisconsin. But the major area, though, for the New Madrid Fault, though, is right through here. It's hitting in Arkansas, Tennessee, Kentucky, and Southern Missouri. These waves move back and forth in the same direction as the fault squeezing and expanding the Right in that area there, you got some major cities in that area. Over here, we got some fossils. Then you get into this area here, and it's supposed to look like different ages. This little forest here would have been during the Pennsylvanian period. Don't know what you're going to find over here. And this is a uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex skull. His name was Woody. At least that's what they named him. Looks like Woody was actually a young T-Rex. He was pretty small for a T-Rex. And over here in this area here, we're getting to learn about some of my favorite things. Uh, roller coasters, which they're using to show you energy. Over here, you can even make a roller coaster. And the kids are having a hard time. Do we have any engineers in the family? I'm not sure. Over here you got some energy conservation showing you how the coasters work. We got Daniel here. We got... <laughs> he just hit my camera. Daniel doesn't like it when he gets picked on. He's kind of a big baby when it comes to this kind of stuff. Oh, I think Nate just got him too. Oh, 
Over here we've got some transformers and things showing us how electricity gets to us. Stairs again. So another little area I think we missed earlier. It's uh, showing us a picture of a skeleton of a killer whale. Pretty big. Up here we've got lots of bones. People back there are working on bones. So he's getting ready to work on a pizza. Lots of different bones. For all of my Slytherin people out there. And back there they have the life science lab. Which it says no tickets are required, so I'm guessing that is free now. Used to cost. And this here is a little kids area. You can come in here and play with puppets and check out the aquarium. Play with some toys over here and just all about things that you can learn about. And in this little area, this is actually some more hands-on stuff here. Like there, Nate can learn about fingerprints. Over here, you can learn about reptiles and amphibians. Over here, they're gonna teach you about illusions. And then over here, you can learn about forensic sciences. If you wanna be a CSI investigator, So I guess we're going to learn about illusions. Let's see what we're learning. Okay, talking about our left and right brain. About the different lobes. Uh, it says one lobe in particular, the occipital lobe. It's devoted to vision. This is, this is where illusions happen. So let's see what... An illusion is an image we perceive are deceptive or misleading. Let's learn about some different types of illusions. <laughs> okay, so this first one here, it's an illusion, but it's not really. It's a picture of some birds, but it sure makes it, makes it look like it's a smiling face with some eyes. seeing this one. Oh, there's a baby. <laughs> That's cool. Right through right here. That is pretty neat. Okay, this one here, you might see two old people, you might see a glass. Just depends on how, what your perception is. Oh, now I see some Mexican folks there, it looks like, playing the thing. Uh, that looks like a picture now. All I saw were the old people at first in a glass in the middle. I see three things in this painting. Oh, 
These ones here, I see a bunch of different colors, but they're telling me that only three of those boxes in the middle there are actually all one color. Our brains play picture tricks on us. That's illusion. This here is actually getting into one of my favorite things, video games. I've had several of these systems here. We had the Atari here, the original Atari with the little wooden front. We had the Sega. Did not have a Dreamcast. Didn't have a Lynx. Did have a Nintendo 64. Had the original Nintendo. Had the Super Nintendo. Had the GameCube. We had a DS. Had a Game Boy. The original Game Boy. I remember playing Tetris on that. That was fun. Do, 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 do. Fun, fun stuff. And over here, we've got the PlayStation. I had the original PlayStation. I had the PlayStation 2, the PlayStation 3. PSP. I currently, I do have the PSP. I currently have a PlayStation 4. I have never owned an Xbox, and I never will. For those of you that are Xbox gamers, I'm sorry. Come over to the PlayStation side. Uh, leave the dark side. Come to the, to the good guys. And as we round the corner here, we come into an area that is all about games. I know games teach us. This so one here asks us, what is the first game you remember playing? Leave down in the comments below what the first game you remember playing was. I'm trying to think. I believe the first game I remember playing would have been Pong, which we find right here. So just let me know in the comments down below what games you remember playing as for the first time. Oh, and they have Tech Mobile up on the screen. I remember Tech Mobile. Um, you actually had the the Raiders. They were the one team that you could do that little long pass down the sideline, and you score every time. You come over here. They have things like chess and 3D chess. We have Sonic the Hedgehog chess, old shoots and ladders, Scrabble up top here, Trouble, Carolyn likes that, that's one of her favorite games, Sorry down here, Candyland, Dominoes, just a lot of old type games. Got all different kinds of chess going on here. You got Sonic the Hedgehog chess, some 3D chess from uh, Star Trek. They call it tri dimensional chess. Down here, you've got 3D chess going on. You got a 3D game board. You got fourth dimensional chess. Make this fun chess. And over here we have got the biggest game of foosball I've ever seen. Lots and lots of players could play this. And these are teaching you about the different types of processors that were being used in different video game systems, and how they were upgraded throughout the years. Over here, they got some old school games. You got a Sony PlayStation going on here. The Sega Genesis. The original Nintendo Entertainment System. Playing one of my favorites, Legend of Zelda. Got the uh, Atari 2600 with Pitfall. I remember playing that one. I don't have you on here. So. <laughs> You're okay. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Oh, Pitfall was one of my favorite games when I was younger. Oh, was it? <laughs> yeah. That was one of the first systems I remember playing. I know my dad had another system before that, but I don't... 
Now over here, they got a little more uh, advanced games going on. Got several different screens and. Looks like it might be rather difficult to do. Here we have got the largest Nintendo controller I've ever seen. Controlling a great big game of Super Mario Brothers. Well folks, that was a fun day at the St. Louis Science Center. Uh, we're just finishing up now. Yeah, we uh, got to see a lot of things. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Uh, Hit the little notification bell there and you'll get to see all of our videos. Again, just uh, enjoy this life that you're living and live the life you're enjoying. Have a good one.